Okay, welcome back. Happy Wednesday. Our quick look at the calendar tells us that today we are covering more related rates. Last class we did this whole linear and quadratic approximation where we would take a messy curve and approximate it with a line or a parabola. Um, but the class before that we did related rates, which again are these classical calculus problems, but they're usually quite challenging. So we've got a second day dedicated to just those. Most of today you will spend working on the homework problems from related rates. Um, Coming up on Friday, uh, we will talk about um, theorems about differentiable functions. And uh, I just wanted to point out uh, real quick that uh, part of your questions of the day heading into Friday, which is, I guess, page uh, 24 or something like that. But part of the questions of the day involves pulling up a quick YouTube clip and checking it out. So that's a little bit unusual. And I just wanted to highlight it. So, um, so even if you don't officially do questions of the day for a grade, I'd still encourage you to check this out and see if you can connect it to the reading for Friday, all right? So uh, back on 23 here. Um, so continuing to look at the calendar. Uh, so Friday is new material. On uh, Wednesday, a week from today, I will hand you the third take-home quiz. So I'll give that to you Wednesday. You'll give it back to me the following Friday. Uh, also Wednesday, a week from today, is project check-in day. So hopefully we've been keeping up with the recommended um, timeline for the two projects. And if not, you'll want to try to make a big push so that you can get as much as possible out of that Wednesday, right? Don't make Wednesday the first time you actually look at these things. Uh, you want to get help from each other on the harder parts of the project, which are not the beginning parts. All right, uh, any questions on the calendar? Okay, uh, just one other thing. We're going to spend a third day on related rates, and we're going to have an in-class quiz where you will work together and hopefully all get 100, right? So that's coming up next week, too. All right, so on the top of page 23, uh, let's get a reader here for number three. Can we go to Isaac? Okay, so we're going to draw a quick sketch here. This doesn't really look like any of the related rates problems that we did the other day, which is why I wanted to do it here, so we'd see something that looks different. And I'll uh, observe that uh, for ship A, X is always the same. It's always at 1.77. And you can see that the Y coordinates are getting bigger as time passes, right? So we just look at the where the boat is every minute and a quarter. And we've got this data for where that boat is. And so uh, if X is staying at 1.77, then I guess we can mark 1.77 here. And note that this ship is heading which way as the Ys get bigger? North. And that can, that's what Isaac read, but at least the data suggests that. So we've got this boat that, um, that ultimately is going to end up up here. At the end of the day, it's at 3.67. But it is heading northwards, right? And then the other table, what's constant, is the y, which is 1.24. So I'll put a y at 1.24. And what's happening to the x's as time passes? <clears throat> They're getting bigger, which means this ship is heading which way? East, which is also what Isaac read. So I'm actually going to make a triangle here. And at the very end of this triangle, where is the uh, a t equals 5? Where is this boat? 6.08, so that's where it is at t equals 5. And um, I've labeled the coordinates there, the 3.67 and the 6.08, to help us, but we got to make sure we see that these red and blue, red and purple line segments are changing, right? The boats are both moving the whole time, um, and we're just going to freeze it at one moment in time. But it seems like probably a good idea to call this thing, uh, you know, like A, that length up there, and then B, that length down there. They're changing, and we're only going to fix them at the very end of this problem. And what we're after here is the rate at which the distance between the ships is changing. So what should I draw? We should draw the hypotenuse, right? That's the distance uh, that the ships are uh, moving away from each other, is however long this hypotenuse is. And so how about we call that a C? <clears throat> Okay, 
So what famous theorem are we going to use that relates those three things? Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is C squared. Once you've got your equations, but before you plug in any specific numbers, what do you do to that equation? They're your derivative. So A squared normally would just be 2A times a dt. Remember, time is the underlying variable. A and B and C are all changing. Time is underneath all of them. So that's the chain rule sticking at the end. Plus B squared becomes 2B B dt equals 2C dc dt. Okay, and now we're going to try to start plugging some stuff in for all of these things. Uh, which is the piece in this puzzle that's the highlighted part that we're after? The CDT, right? It's the length of that blue line segment, and the rate at which that is changing is symbolized the CDT. So that's what we're after, which means every other symbol in this problem had better get changed into a number. Right? We're only allowed to have that one unknown in this equation. Okay. So let's see if we can start finding some numbers. Uh, the key here is what's happening at um, t equals 5. And so I did this without even hinting at why I was doing it, but t equals 5 is the, the point that I kind of plotted. Like I put numbers in the picture because I knew that t equals 5 was the special point. So the numbers that are written up here in purple and red are actually the numbers we'll need. So at t equals 5, how do I find out how long A is? You can look at that picture and figure out how, how long A is. Yeah, isn't it? Right, A is just this distance, which is just those numbers subtracted. Now again, I made this easy because I drew exactly the right numbers in the picture. If you didn't know that at the, you know, kind of going into it, it would actually be a little bit of work to find this thing. It seems easy, but it would be a little bit of work. Where's the 3.67? You see it in the table? Yeah, so, so there it is. It's in the A table. Great. Where's the 1.24? It's in the B table, right? It's kind of strange, but that's the distance that we need, I think. I don't know where they start, and the picture I know might imply that they start here. They are. So I'm not saying that they start at the corner of that, that rectangle or the triangle, but even if they started someplace else, like let's say that this guy is just going north that way, and this guy maybe he, he starts here, and it's just this part. There is the triangle that I've drawn there, right? Even if that triangle isn't really representative of where they start the problem. And so even though it seems like ship B's 1.24 should have nothing to do with ship A's distance, it does because that triangle is the one that we're going to focus on. Okay, so I think we know what we need to do with those numbers. So uh, this distance in here, somebody with a, I guess we don't need a calculator, 3, 4, 2.43. Okay, so that takes the place of what letter? That's A. So we go 2 times 2.43. Okay, the ADT represents the rate at which that line segment is growing. We don't have a formula. All we have is the data table. So how would you estimate how quickly A is moving? Yeah, change in Y, right? That's the upward part. Over change in time. Time is the underlying variable. So it is growing at a certain rate of change and that's exactly what we need to do. So putting these two guys together we see the ADT is, so we're going to take the y's and subtract them, 3.67 minus 3.35 over and then we'll take the times and subtract them, 5 minus 3.75. It's not super important to me what the numerical answers are. That's going to be easy. But but figuring out what the calculations are that are important, that's the hard part of this problem. 
we are trying to estimate how fast this guy is moving at t equals 5. We have very incomplete information. The best we can do is use the information that we have that's closest to t equals 5. So we're not actually finding the slope of a tangent line. We're finding the slope of a secant line. We're connecting two points on a curve that isn't drawn here and saying that's as good as we can do for the slope of the tangent line. All right, what do we get up here? Anybody else? Same? Yep. Two, five, six. So that goes there. And then there's a plus. And why don't we just say that the rest of this one is the first part of the group activity. So work with your neighbors. Maybe write the calculations down before you type them. Because if you don't know exactly what you're supposed to type, you're not going to type it right. So see if you can work through the rest of the calculations. We'll get it. There's a final answer on the next page, so we can check against that. And once you finish this first problem in the activity, just continue with the homework, which is scanned, and it's a few pages earlier in the packet. And raise the flag if I can help.